Let's go live now to Bellingham, Washington, where we're joined by Baoshan Liu with Washington, uh, Western Washington University. She's a sociology professor there. Uh, Mr. Wong, I think, would be kind of the exception. There's, there's a lot of talk about this one-child policy, the relaxing of it, trying to get people to have more children. They're now talking about tax breaks, uh, different incentives. Give me your thought on that, because obviously you've got a, this disparity, which we're going to talk a little bit more about in, in a bit. But, but what, what do they need to do to kind of gin up the numbers, do you think? Uh, for in terms of fertility rates, uh, have, uh, have more people have more children. Uh, I think it really comes down to have better support for women, because women indeed will be the ones who deliver the baby. So it means better labor force, uh, sort of uh, work environment for women, better access to child care, maternity care and uh, or so, all sorts of public support for women to really sort of increase that number for, for fertility. Yeah. Uh, Tony's report, you know, you have a guy like Mr. Wong, but he's kind of the exception, not the rule. Approximately one out of three Chinese will be older than 60 by 2050. There's this talk about the 421 problem. Namely, there are now four grandparents, two parents for every one working Chinese. Talk to me about those numbers and uh, the demographics and how much of a difficulty this is going to be as, as we move on in time. Well, that demographic really means that a lot of the elder care responsibility will be transmitted from family to society. And in many different regards, in terms of uh, medical care and in particular uh, sort of uh, personal care and, and other kind of uh, social services to ensure the physical, emotional, and social well-being of the elderly. So I think China now faced a huge challenge in all three fronts uh, in terms of providing adequate care for its aging population, uh, with the exception to, to, to Mr. Wong. But I think still Mr. Wong needs a lot of uh, social services as well uh, to really give him the platform to age so sort of gracefully mm -hmm. uh, with so much energy. And uh, in the three regards, I think medical services, uh, Chinese government, uh, uh, right now uh, there's a, a significant uh, number of Chinese Chinese elders are really uh, having a lot of health problems, uh, mostly chronic conditions and uh, cognitive diseases, as well as depression also on the rise. Right now, China's medical system is heavily relied on the sort of the general hospitals, and, and China really desperately needs to build a more comprehensive sort of community-based uh, health care system and with more emphasis on long-term care. Uh, uh, palliative care, as well as hospice care and other sorts of uh, end-of-life care. At the same time, I think China needs to really build a um, build uh, its uh, its its elder care uh, professionals, its uh, sort of uh, caregivers, because family now are not taking on, are having more and more difficulty taking on the responsibility. So we need more professionals. We need more caregivers, and they need to be trained. They need to be educated. We need to build sort of a standard. And then the third one is to really how to build a more age uh, age friendly environment for the elder, including sort of uh, better uh, transportation, uh, modification in their living, in their houses, in their homes, uh, uh, so they can age at home. Uh, at the same time, organize leisure activities, uh, uh, things like that. All right. Uh, well, it, tell you what, it's a, a big, big problem, and you've yeah. touched on a lot of the uh, complex issues surrounding it. Thanks so much for joining us live from Bellingham, Washington.